Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. Hard times turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let these hard times turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. I'm gonna keep on praying to find my way, find my way. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to um, St. Joan of Arc once again, especially on this Sunday in which we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension, when Jesus says to everybody, it's up to you now. Kind of a scary time. And so as we begin our celebration, let us call to mind our need for God's forgiveness, for God's graces, God's goodness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Let us pray that prayer as we celebrate this great and beautiful day. Glory to God in the highest and earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You receive the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. O oh God, whose Son today ascended to the heavens as the apostles looked on, Grant, we pray that in accordance with his promise, we may be worthy for him to live with us always on earth, and we with him in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us listen to the word of God. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons established by God's own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky, two figures in white garments were suddenly standing beside them. They said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. God mounts God's throne to the shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts God's throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great ruler over all the earth. God mounts God's throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts God's throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise, sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts God's throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For ruler of all the earth is God, Sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits above God's holy throne. God mounts God's throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in the knowledge of God. May the spirit, may the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to God's call. What are the riches of glory in God's inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of God's power for us who believe? in accord with the exercise of God's great might, which was worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at the right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And God put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. This, my family, is God's word to us. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain on which Jesus had ordered them. They saw him, they worshipped him, but they doubted. Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching you to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. As you probably noticed, today is the Feast of the Ascension. It used to be on Thursday, but the diocese switched to Sunday about 15 years ago, so you're not confused. The Ascension is one of those, those feast days that tells us a lot about what it means to be church. Because we remember, up until a certain point, the disciples followed Jesus. And then all of a sudden, he's taken away from them. We read in Acts, you know, which was written to Theophilus, the lover of God, that God lover. He tells the story of him being taken up in the air, and they look up, and the angels are, are with him. And then we also hear Matthew's gospel, where he's taken up, but he at the same time gives him that great commission to go forth to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And basically what is being said, it's in your court. You are now the body of Christ. You are Christ to one another. You are the body of Christ here on earth. So now it's up to you. Build it. And we know for the disciples, they didn't know quite what to do. The initial part that they originally did is they wouldn't hit out. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go next. And then we know the next week when we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, we find out the Spirit somehow enlivened them and they went forth and started doing wondrous things, preaching the Word of God. And people listened, they came to them, and then the problems really started. Because now they had to figure how do we build a church? How do we make a place? That is the incarnation of God on earth. And that's the history of the church for the last 2,000 or more years. It's a fascinating history. There's high points and low points, times where we did were incredibly great things, and times when we were so paltry, it's unbelievable that we even continue to exist. We look sometimes now at the, at the horribleness of, of the abuse cycle, but it's happened before, not to excuse it in any way, but the church has always been challenged by the actions of those in charge and the people of God. It's up to us. How do we build that kingdom? And we may say, well, how do you do that? That's shocking, but think of your own life. How many times in your life are you stuck with the fact that all of a sudden you're in charge, you have to make a decision. I'm thinking of all the graduates at this time of year. And I feel sorry for them because they had to have the big celebrations they're supposed to have. But I'll tell you this. 30 years from now, you can tell your kids, it was so bad when I was a kid, we didn't even have a ceremony, so quit complaining. So you've always got that. you always got to go back on. You've got a great story to tell them how you suffered, so your kids maybe appreciate that. But at some point now, as you graduate, what are you going to do next? How, is, how are you going to fulfill your life's dreams? What's your first steps? How are you going to respond? You know, I always tell people you want to make God laugh, tell them plans for your future. Because things don't always happen the way we expect them to. I mean, if, if, as one person says, just take a look around now. Who knew where we'd be at this point in our life? Who knew we would be dealing with a situation with this virus where we're all locked up and semi-scared of each other almost? But we're learning how to live with it, and we will learn how to live with it, and we will survive. And thank God for the people who are risking their lives for us to survive now and taking care of us. But the disciples were the same thing. What do we do next? All of a sudden, there were some people believed, but they didn't believe exactly the way the other people believed. And what did they do? The first thing they do, they started beating each other up and out of love, of course. We hear the disciples. Peter didn't necessarily go with Paul. Paul and Peter would fight. Paul and Barnabas would have um, uh, fights with each other. They quit traveling with each other because they annoyed each other so much. There was always divisions in the church. Who was right? Who was wrong? That'll always be with us. But the only thing we have going for us and the only thing that keeps us together is if we face those problems, first of all, with humility, knowing we can't, not all, we're not always perfect. Integrity, meaning that we walk it like we talk and don't lie and don't cheat and don't say one thing and do another. They have that integrity. And most importantly of all, on top of that, they have compassion and love. To try to see people wherever they are in their journey, as we like to say here, to see where they are seeking and what they're looking for. The ascension is basically saying, you, you are Christ to one another. You build the, living, the church of God. What is the most loving and greatest way that you can be of service to your neighbor and to God and build that beloved community? So the ball's in your court. How are you going to do it? 
What decisions are you going to make? Where are you going to go? Those are not easy questions, and sometimes the world, you know, as we all know, odd choices come to us we never expected. But always, if we can look at it with humility, integrity, and love, that's the best we can do. So let us profess our faith in this Jesus Christ and this person who is with us still in his spirit and God's spirit with us. And I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son and Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he'll come to judge the living the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now turn to the Lord and ask in our prayers and petitions, especially on this week in which we celebrate that we are the hand of God, the body of Christ. And as we remember on this memorial weekend, those who have served us with the greatest gift of all, their very lives. Let us ask our prayers. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those suffering from the coronavirus pandemic, including those that are sick, those out of work, and those struggling with mental illness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those impacted by economic inequality. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those suffering from an increase in domestic violence. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the safety of those workers on the front line. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And again, on this Memorial Weekend, let us pray for all those that serve our country. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made, it'll become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it'll become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and your sacrifice, that they may be acceptable to God in heaven. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's church. O God, whose only begotten Son, our high priest, is seated ever living at your right hand to intercede for us, grant that we may approach with confidence the throne of grace and there obtain your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, mighty eternal God. For the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator here, being God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we might, that we, his members, might be confident in following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. And Lord, you are holy indeed, you are the font of all holiness. Let your Holy Spirit come upon these gifts like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. At the time he was betrayed, he willingly entered his passion and taking bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, it will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you found us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by his Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, church, Spread throughout the world, bring her the fullness of charity of the Francis of Pope, Bernard our Bishop, and all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and the entire people that your Son has gained for you. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we merit to be coherent to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. With confidence now, let us pray the prayer which Jesus gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be there. And Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And this is the Lamb of God. This is Jesus Christ. Happy are we to be called to a supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. together now pray our prayer for peace loving God in this time of uncertainty we ask for your grace that we might persevere with patience 
and courage as we seek a new hope. Guide us in the path of compassion, justice, and peace. Amen. Well, thank you for being here with us again this week. I want to also thank you especially for your generosity. Um, people are constantly um, dropping off food. Uh, or, ordinarily, we have um, the Bathing Community Center come once a week to pick up food, but so much has dropped off, we have to kind of call them twice a week just to pick up all the food that you have dropped off for the food shelf. So thank you for your generosity, as well as your generosity for maintaining the parish. Thank you, we're doing okay because of that, and we thank you for, 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 for your generosity. I also have to admit that I might, finally had my first 15 minutes of fame. I was walking around Richfield Lake, and in the evening, this young couple comes up and goes, oh my God, it's the YouTube guy. So I had no idea, I said, oh my God, now what did I do wrong? And I really, really, oh, they were watching mass on YouTube. So fame is a fleeting thing, but it's nice to be acknowledged for something occasionally. But we're working very hard and we're having a big meeting this week to see how we can reopen again as safely as possible. It's gonna be a messy affair, but we'll try to do it. We, as I said, I think last week, and Father Cassidy is too, we've, we have a bunch of um, items on order that we need from um, uh, sanitation stations where we have, where you can disinfect. We're also um, a buying machine that we can use for disinfecting between the masses. Uh, that won't, none of that stuff's gonna come to the second week of June, so we're waiting on that before we open up, and then we're trying to figure out how many masses and uh, how, how to seat people so they have safe distances, so we're looking at it. Um, of course, the governor still says people over 65 shouldn't come to Mass, and I walk walking Rears for Lake, some woman over 65 came up to me and said, well, that's just stupid. I'm in better shape than most of the young people are here. I don't know what the hell you're trying to keep us away. Well, that's your decision to make, okay? We will not stop you at the door or check your age. We will check, we do, we do have some great thermometers, now we're gonna check you as you come in to see if you're heated, but we're working on it, and it's, you really, I mean, of course, you better know better than I do, but you sure do miss the, the community, and hopefully soon we'll find some way to come back together. So until then, the Lord be with you. And your spirit. And may God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks for being here.